much like the original Love Live School Idol project, Love Live Sunshine was a massive hit that basically overshadowed everything else in its season. Well, except for Mob Psycho 100. Original series director Kyogo Kutakahiko had just come off of Iron Blooded Orphans, but didn't go back to the world of school idols, leaving Sakai Kazuo to take his place. A guy who, while he was directing units and animation in various anime, hadn't been a full series director in 10 years. Yet it turned out pretty great, with a visual style distinct from the previous series and an approach that took the characters in interesting and generally more likable directions while keeping them true to the concepts introduced in Dengeki magazine stories, mostly. When Sunshine's second season came around, it kept this up to a great degree, but there were some pretty obvious ups and downs. While the conclusion was heartbreaking and justified the reuse of the Save Our School plot from the first, and Mari got her personality back instead of just acting like Nozomi, the time jump and changes made to please the fanbase led to some plot holes. Sunshine Season 2 was still well-loved, but there was something missing, and the issue was more than its heavy lead focus. I'm not here to complain about Love Live Sunshine Season 2. It had a lot of great material, and in many ways it was a worthy continuation to the first and to the original series. But it could have landed better if there had been something to connect the dots, and since Love Live doesn't do Expanded Universe and the various media in the franchise are all alternate universes instead, the only way to do that would be a third anime season, which of course they aren't doing. So because I don't have time to write fanfiction these days, after all I've got a YouTube channel to run, here are my thoughts for the hypothetical season 1.5 that I think should have been. Some basic rules to build on. It has to take place in between seasons 1 and 2 and explain all discrepancies and plot holes between them. Anything that just got ignored later or introduced out of nowhere must be addressed. Finally, anything that just plain seems missing can be thrown in if needed. With that, let's get to it. Season 1 of Love Live Sunshine ended before the end of the first Love Live of the year. This was largely applauded at the time because then they could spend the second season on the rest of it rather than follow Aqua through the second Love Live and again echo Season 1. This did not happen, with Season 2 showing that they failed off screen and didn't make it to Nationals. While having Season 2 cover the second Love Live made more sense as it actually let the school plot finish, it still leaves a gap of time that's perfect to fit into Season 1.5. Thus, our story starts when they're still competing in the regionals and we'll have to follow them up until they lose and don't make it to nationals. So we don't have the implication that Chika's audience participation stunt disqualified them. Instead, we see Aqua building themselves up further. The beginning of the season intersperses training and performing in Love Live qualifiers with daily life segments. Here's where I would have an episode explaining Mari's return to form. After the girls learned in Season 1 to work towards something new instead of trying to copy Muse, she decides that trying to be like Nozomi isn't being as helpful as when she's being herself, and we get a flashback to the third year's early idol days, which is the only time it's getting brought up because those poor girls, Kanan especially, could use some development in the show outside of it. Mari remembers how she used to be a metalhead and wasn't sure about idol music, but decides that it's okay for her to stop second-guessing herself, and besides, people can like more than one genre, and also stop trying to play stealth mentor by groping her friends. I'd also give an episode to Hanamaru, one that doesn't reduce her to the two running gags of stuffing her face and shutting down Yoshiko's chuny antics. After Ruby shows her some idol magazines, Hanamaru gets the research bug on their next trip into the city to perform. She spends basically an entire day at the library learning all about idols, and the others start to worry that she's feeling like she can't measure up. Which is true to an extent, but she also remembers the encouragement the other members of Aqua gave her, and when they're about to take the stage, Hanamaru spots a flaw in the lighting or stage setup because of how the groups before them performed combined with her new idol knowledge. She tells Chika and Daya, the resident experts, and they come up with a plan to work around this and rank high in the performance. Aside from that, something for Kanan about balancing her diving shop duties with Aqua and something for the three subunits would be good for early development episodes. We'll also establish that Yoshiko and Riko's moms become friends, which you'll recall happened off screen. I'll also start developing a popular school idol unit they're competing against in their own region, since of course Saint Snow are from Hokkaido. Instead of giving this role to OCs, I'd give it to a cameo from the mobile game. Specifically, the Shinonome girls who weren't retconned into Nichigasaki, so Sana, Rika, Yuri, Koko, Christina, Mizuki, and Kasane. This unit gets the name Kiseki, which was one of the group name nominees in the Dengeki poll that lost to Aqua. Of course, we get a silly episode ragging on the fact that Kasane looks exactly like Chika since Chika is based on her design. But then we get to something I really don't want to deal with and really, really should. Full disclosure, I'm a Chika Riko shipper. As I brought up in my video about the movie, season 1 was Chika and Riko's love story, often to the exclusion of other things that could have used some spotlight, and it was really earnest and heartwarming. It even made a little crack in the subtext ceiling. But then came season 2, the production team noticed how popular Riko was, and they decided to push that ship and basically ignore the one they just made anime canon. So as much as I hate to do this, the only way to stitch together this plot hole is to break them up. 
temporarily for the sake of my own self-indulgence, but it has to be done. And the way I'd do this would also tie into why Aqua doesn't make it to nationals. So halfway through this hypothetical filler season, Kasane is seen with a significant other. School idols, of course, are not actually subject to the love ban, makeup regulations, not being allowed to use public washrooms, and other ridiculous but unfortunately true industry rules. But most groups do at least try to stay in line with what real idols are expected to, and the audience in turn expects it of them, so Kiseki's popularity starts to go down. Because of Chika's resemblance to Kasane, they start being dragged down a little as well, and while Chika is glad to press on, Jiko's self-loathing kicks in. Despite the support of the others, she believes she's putting Aqua as a whole and Chika specifically at risk, and she reluctantly breaks it off with her. The two of them are so depressed over this that they fail their next performance and don't advance to nationals. The ending arc has all the girls coming down from this. Kanan and Yo, being Chika's childhood friends, talk about how Chika got her heart broken just like Yo had in season 1 and how to support her, especially since Kanan's been in Jiko's place with regard to shutting out her groupmates for fear of them all getting hurt. So Kanan goes to try and talk to Chika, and then of course we need to set up the Yohariko thing. Not hating on your ship, it's just not my ship, please don't start a war in the comments. Fortunately, Yoshiko takes the city bus with Yo, so it's easy to get them in the same place, and for Yo to confide that she wants to support them but her intentions on Chika, who, even though she rejected her, is still her best friend. Yoshiko then goes to try and check on Jiko, but trying to set up a summoning circle outside her house when she won't answer the door doesn't go according to plan. Thankfully, their moms come to the rescue by concocting an excuse for them to talk, and they bond a little, though Riko's accursed fate to lose her heart's desire, much like Johan I fell from heaven! Well, maybe it's bonding, maybe it's just silly enough to cheer her up, and they call the rest of the group over to Riko's place. Chika's pity party isn't going too great either, and she leaves the room for a moment when the phone rings. It's Saint Snow calling from Hokkaido. They caught footage of Aqua's performance and would like to know what atrocity they just witnessed. Chika isn't feeling it, but Sarah says she told them to take Love Live seriously, and she thought they were, so something's seriously gone wrong. Kanan and Yo over here and step in, saying that something is wrong, but it's not Chika's fault. The Kazuno sisters say they're preparing for nationals, but they want Aqua to be their best too, and it's not like Leah's worried or anything, which she so is. After they hang up, Chika, Yo, and Kanan look over to see Riko in her room across the alley, crying on the others. Chika hesitates and approaches the balcony. The group at the Sakura Uchis notices and urges Chika to approach. With the rest of Aqua backing them up, Chika and Chika reconcile, and depending on what you prefer, they either agree to stay friends or get back together but decide to be a little more low-key about things. The group decides that it doesn't matter what other people think, because they've decided to be their own kind of school idols, that means they get to decide what they can do in their own lives. After everyone convenes in the same room rather than across the way, Yoshiko makes a show of deciding to jump to the other balcony, but chickens out and takes the stairs while Daya gives a safety lecture, they have a heartwarming group hug and send Kiseki some supportive fan mail. The season ends with Aqua practicing on the beach singing out to the ocean. This is just my idea, of course. I'm sure you have your own ideas for how to bridge the gap between seasons 1 and 2 and keep continuity, as well as what maybe should have happened differently in the show. Let me know in the comments. I'm sure your ideas are great. This is Secret Identity Studio, and next time I do this, I'm not sinking my own ship.